To begin with this procedure, I would check the patient orders, and after that, I would gather all the supplies that would need it be that would be needed for the order. So for this, I grab, um, grabbed a restraint for um, the restraining procedure, and then I would wash. I would go in the room and I would wash my hands. I would identify myself and the patient if conscious. If not, I can identify themselves with their wristband and their uh, room number. And then I would give them privacy by either closing the door behind me or closing the curtain. And if conscious, I would explain what I'm about to do and then I would raise the bed if needed. So, we'll go in the room now. When applying wrist restraints, it is important. Uh -oh. It is important to make sure that the wrist restraints are tight, but not too tight. And you wanna try to fit about two fingers underneath them and then you want to be able to check for a capillary refill so you can ensure blood flow is still able to flow through the restraints. Then you want to tighten any adjustments that can be tightened. So here you would tighten that one and you would look for color change and once again the capillary refill. You would then tie it to the bed frame. This would ensure, the slip knot would ensure that the patient cannot escape it, but if needed, you can easily pull, and then they're allowed to be free. After doing this, I would return the bed to regular height. I would assess the patient for any other needs. Um, with restraining patients, it's essential to look at their full body, and make sure that there's no other health needs that need to be addressed. Um, and then you would dispose of anything used. In this procedure, there's nothing used. You would wash your hands, so foam out on the way out, and then you would clean the supplies. So once this restraint is done, we would clean this restraint, and I would make sure there's nothing else the patient needed, and then go out and document what I just did.